Well, I suppose the first thing, you have to look at it in three, maybe three big stages. Obviously, there's first a negotiation phase where we establish what the, the framework is between um, the UK and Gibraltar on the one side and the EU on the other. Uh, then we'll have to put in place some legis a legislative programme and then implementing that. Um, so the f negotiation stage will really be what is the context in which we're, what's the nature of, of our exit, what, how, what's the ongoing relationship. So from Gibraltar's perspective, that will be most, most of all, presumably, how it relates to how Gibraltar relates to Spain and probably, um, the, the, from most importantly, how the border will, will operate. And so there will have to be some discussion as to how that arrangement works. There is, a legislative, there is, for example, a legislative regime. I'm not sure if anyone has it in mind to, to implement it, but there is a legislative regime that exists uh, within the EU for local border traffic to be regulated with non-EU states. And perhaps one means would be to use that as a means for a bilateral discussion. And that framework determines in the future how this legislative process can happen. I mean, Theresa May says, um, what is it? It's, it's uh, a no deal is better than a bad deal. I mean, I suppose that's right in a, in a sense that if you think that the bad, what the very worst deal might be apocalyptically awful, um, I have to say I find it difficult to see how any. Uh, in, in any normal world, how no deal could be better, um, better than a bad deal, certainly not for Gibraltar. Um, but the idea is once you have that deal in place, you then know what it is you're going to legislate for. What, and that's what we, you know, the, the, the government is now in the UK is now talking about the Great Repeal Bill. Gibraltar will presumably have to put in place a similar Gibraltar Great Repeal Bill, um, which will track a lot of what goes on. It won't be the same, obviously, but it will be, have a similar effect. And that'll come in, it'll have to get rid of the old EU law, but then immediately repla replace it and, and put it back in place. Because unless Gibraltar wants to um, rewrite a few thousand regulations overnight, the simplest thing to do is to sort of take it out as EU law and put it back in as Gibraltar law, um, and then start the laborious process of working. So, well, okay, what do we do about this? What do we do about that? Oh, and look, this regulation refers to the so-and-so authority, which is in actually an EU authority. So, what are we going to do about that? Are we going to have a Gibraltar authority, or are we going to have a? Are we going to rely on a UK authority, or are we going to defer to the EU? Or so, it's a case of looking at the institutions which will house the EU directives, which now become UK and Gibraltar laws. Yes, and I can imagine, you know, you'll, the, the first obvious place will be to bring something back to Gibraltar, but that may not be practical. I can see that in some cases you may find that actually there's some argument, if given a positive uh, mindset, to start discussing them with, with Spain. You know, for example, at the moment there are regulatory structures to do with, with waterways and so forth, and, and you, know, you might see a situation where people thought, well, actually, isn't the sensible way to regulate the waters around Gibraltar is not through the EU or through the UK, but actually with Spain. So you might find it new. You, but again, that assumes two willing parties willing to discuss. Willing, willing to engage positively. Uh, we don't know whether that we, we, at the moment we simply, we simply don't know whether that's whether that's the context for the next discussion.